This video was brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a totally free trial of their premium membership. A few days ago, one of the largest acquisitions in the history of software companies was announced. Salesforce, the customer relations management company, if you want to call it that, just got Slack for itself for a good $27.7 billion. That is more than Microsoft paid for LinkedIn in 2016. It's also more than Facebook paid for WhatsApp and Instagram combined. We already made a video about Slack's valuation back in July this year when it was already among the fastest growing tech companies ever. The valuation or market cap back then was around $20 billion. Six months later, this deal confirms that Slack is worth more than 7.7 .7 extra billion dollars now, but it all comes with a bunch of new questions. Who brings what to the table in such a merger? Is it a win or a loss for Slack? Is it an offensive or defensive move for Salesforce in a market where Microsoft seems to be the ultimate boss? Let's talk once again about Slack, but in this case, about the Salesforce acquisition of Slack in this episode of Company Forensics. Let's start with the why. That's only a fair question to ask, mostly if you go back to August this year when Salesforce founder and CEO Mark Benioff stated that it wasn't a good time for mergers and acquisitions. He said that those were not Salesforce's plans at the moment. Four months later, he just closed the biggest acquisition in Salesforce history, almost doubling the previous one and in the midst of a pandemic. Tableau was the analytics company they acquired for more than $15 billion only one year ago. And suppose you go back a little longer, also about a year ago, Slack was getting listed for public trading in the New York Stock Exchange and its CEO, Stuart Butterfield, expressed that he would prefer the company to stay independent in its journey. So what has changed? In all fairness, the year 2020 has changed everything quite a bit. That includes the markets, consumer habits, work dynamics, and pretty much everything in between. A marriage made in heaven. That's what Mark Benioff has said about the company's merger. Yes, it sounds too romantic, but it could also hold true if everything goes right. Just in case, let's do a quick reminder of what Salesforce and Slack are and why they are thriving in the current times of remote work. In short, of course, Salesforce is one of the largest companies in the world. It started as a cloud-based CRM, or Customer Relationships Management, which was an operating system mainly for salespeople. But now, Salesforce also powers automated marketing, business analytics, customer success, and back office work. This fiscal year, Salesforce revenue has been reported at $17.1 billion, growing 29% year on year. It has left behind industry pioneers like IBM and Oracle. Under Benium's leadership, Salesforce has been successfully executing a playbook of expansion during the last decade. That is mainly by merging several companies that fit into the complete digital business environment Salesforce wants to build. Some of the Salesforce acquisitions recently include Tableau, a business analytics company, Quip, a collaboration tool for documents and files, and I don't want to talk about them because they're a competitor, and Exact Target, a marketing automation system. So you can see what Salesforce is doing here. They're integrating different business business solutions in one place. Yet Slack is meant to be a cherry on top. Slack is the coolest, most effective and transparent way for companies to communicate internally and across departments. This is not an ad. We actually love Slack and we use it in Slidebean. Who wins and who loses? A significant transaction like this one inevitably generates mixed opinions and reactions in the markets. The price of Salesforce stock went down around 9% shortly after the announcement, and it has been zigzagging its way back up. The acquisition caught some of Salesforce shareholders off guard and short-term investors may not be super excited about the move. Analysts have all different takes on the matter. Some argue that Slack wasn't growing at the pace everyone expected it to grow during the pandemic, and it was starting to get left behind by its main competitor, Microsoft Teams. So it seems that Slack needed a big ally to compete. Some argue that the prime Salesforce paid for Slack was too expensive, considering that Slack hasn't even yet reached a billion dollars in revenue. Others think that Salesforce got for itself one of the most valuable assets in the category of the future of work, and the deal will look cheap in a few years from now since the potential is immense. Some think the two companies have what is needed to build a digital headquarter solution for all businesses, but others believe Slack's integration into the Salesforce environment is not so evident and maybe a distraction from its core business. 
business. When asked about it, Benioff remembered a similar first reaction with previous acquisitions that have proved successful over time. For example, with the exact target merger, he has said that the company, the marketing company, went from making a few hundred million dollars in 2013 to a couple of billion dollars these days. It's similar to the Tableau acquisition. So only time will tell if the Slack deal can be deemed a win or a loss. But there seems to be consent that the merger looks promising for the long term. War against Microsoft. Part of the discussion, of course, about this big deal revolves around Slack's main competitor, Microsoft Teams. Both Slack and Teams serve a similar purpose, and Teams is the only other player in this market that can really pose a threat to Slack and vice versa. But Salesforce also competes with Microsoft in the tech enterprise market, and the Teams product was a big gap as Salesforce had nothing like it for business communications. So in Salesforce's roadmap for expansion, it seems smart to join forces with Teams' single largest competitor. Some even suggest that this acquisition of Slack may be some sort of retaliation after the bid war they held with Microsoft for LinkedIn. Allegedly, Salesforce was very interested in buying LinkedIn, and the two made their bet, but finally Microsoft's $26 billion offer won back in 2016. CNBC analyst Ari Levy thinks that the nature of the relationship between Microsoft and Salesforce changed after that. Now, the Slack acquisition deepens the competition between these two companies, and that could end up being good for consumers. The truth is both companies are working towards that digital headquarters concept, bringing cloud-based solutions to all the departments inside a company and to all kinds of companies. The goal is a new work operating system, if you will, accessible to everyone anywhere. These types of acquisitions are, in the end, forging how the future of digital work is going to look like. And there's much at stake for these two giant companies that want to hoard the market. It won't take long to see more significant transformation as digital operations become a new normal for all businesses, even after the pandemic. This is all happening in parallel with a revolution of digital learning. Suddenly, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to a mid-tier school feels less worth it, forcing colleges to reinvent their value proposition. Instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars, you could spend zero dollars learning a new skill with Skillshare. Since Skillshare became a sponsor, I've made it an effort to learn something new every month. This time, I watched Nate Drew's course on online content creation. The course has been completed by over 10,000 people, and it focuses on finding your voice online, something that we've done over the past few months with great success, it seems, and it has helped skyrocket our channel lately. The thing is, as a startup CEO, you're probably and inevitably an online content creator, whether it's Twitter or your company blog or marketing copy for your website or YouTube, you'll probably end up being the face of your company at some point. And this course has some fantastic insights in overcoming your insecurities, finding a core theme for your content, and also learning to break your own rules. You can take this course and thousands more for free with a trial that you can get using the link in the description. The first thousand people to sign up get a free trial on Skillshare Premium Membership, and after the trial, Skillshare is just under $10 a month. But back to Salesforce, can Salesforce and Slack create the new digital workplace and give Microsoft truly a run for its money? Let us know in the comments what you think, and we'll see you next week.